In this video, I'm going to show you how to use interfaces with class modules in Excel VBA. Now, interfaces are used in a lot of programming languages, and what they are is part of how we use object-oriented code. And in this video, I'm going to show you how we're going to do that with Excel VBA. And I'm going to do it with plenty of code examples so you can understand exactly what it's about. Now, if you like this video, please click on the like button below. And if you'd like to get updated about upcoming videos, then please click on the subscribe button. So the first thing we need to understand is why do we need to use interfaces? And the best way to understand this is to look at an example where we don't use interfaces and then after we can use interfaces and see what the difference is. So in this example here, we've got very, very simple data. We've got basically an amount and we've got an interest type. And we're going to calculate the interest based on the type. So if it's type A, we calculate interest in one way. And if it's type B, we calculate the interest in a different way. So let's have a look at how we'd write that code. So the first thing we'll do is create our module and then we'll create a simple sub. We'll just call it main. And then we'll read our range. So we always read the range something like this. We declare the range variable and we set the range equal to our sheet. So sh sh data is the code name of the worksheet. You can see it on the left hand side. And then we say range A1 and we use current region then to get back all the adjacent data. Then once we have that, we read through the data. So let's read through the data. And we do dim i as long and we say for i equals two because we're not reading the header row and we say two to range dot rows dot count and then we have next i that ends our loop and what we want to do is we want to read the amount and we want to read the type so let's declare the variables for this so amount and type variables so we just say dim amount as double and we'll say interest type as string and then how we read them is very simple we just do amount equals and we use the cells of range so the first one is the row the row is always going to be i because we're reading through a loop and i is the current row and then we're going to say one which is the amount so it's column one basically and then for interest type, it's pretty much the same thing. But what we're doing in this case is we're just reading from the second column. And so this allows us to read through the data. And so once we're reading through the data and we get the amount and we get the interest type, then we can decide to pick the interest type we're going to use and calculate the interest. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create the two classes for calculating the interest. So let's insert our classes like this so class one and again class two so let's rename these and i'm going to call it just cls for class and we'll say in to rest a and the second one will be then interest b and each of these will have a calculate function so we'll do function calculate and what happens is they get the amount as a double and then they return the result as a double. So it's very simple what I'm doing here. I'm just doing a simple calculation to get the, get the interest, just to keep it very simple. So we'll say equals amount multiplied by 1.5. So that's how we're calculating in B and calculating in A, we're gonna be doing it by 1.1. Now, it could be much more complicated than this, and that's why we would have different objects for doing this. But I'm just using a very simple example here. So we do a debug compile, make sure everything is okay. And then we go back to our module, and this is how we're going to use them. We declare the variables like this, dim o interest a as cls interest a. And we do the same thing then for b. And then what we want to do is we want to work on whatever interest type that we've come across. So we use an if statement here. We say if interest, and so interest type, if it equals A, what we want to do is we want to create a new object of A. So we do set O interest like this, and we say equals new CLS 
interest A, and then we want to run the calculation. And so we use O interest A, and then we call calculate like this. Now we do the very same thing for B. We're just going to copy this code, and then we have an else if in this case. And we just get rid of this space here. And so everything here is going to be an A. So what we can just do actually is just do A and replace it with B and just match where the case is capital. Do a replace all. And then we've got all Bs here. And we always check if there's an invalid type because we want to make sure, because it can happen very easy and we want to make sure that the code doesn't try and continue on. Now we put proper error handling here when writing a full application, but at the moment a message box is fine. Invalid type. And, and of course we say what that type was so that we can figure out where we're going wrong. And then we say end if. We should have the amount here. And we should have the amount here. And then what we do is, we're, we're, what we're going to do as well is we're going to have a result. So let's have result as double. And we say result equals this and result equals this. Now because we're using a equals before the call, we always have to have parentheses. So anytime we're not just calling a sober function on its own, we must have parentheses. And then down here, what we're going to do is we're going to print the result. So let's do a debug compile, and then we run this code, and you see that it printed out all the values. So let's step through the code as it's the easiest way to understand. So we run the code, we've read the first row, interest type we can see here is A, so this creates the new object, and then it runs the calculate. So we go into our calculate and it multiplies it by 1.1. So then we go to the next type, let's just run it onto the next type. And the next type then, of course, is B. So we go to B, we create the new B object, and then we call calculate. And so on until we have all the value. Now this code works very well. But there's problems that it has that we're going to look at. And, and we're going to use the interfaces to deal with these problems. So the first thing is you can see that we have two variables. So for every type, we have a variable O interest A, O interest B, and so on. Now we've only two in this case, but imagine we had 10. Then we need to declare 10 different variable types. And we don't know if we're going to use them all each time. So that's one thing that's a bit messy. Not the end of the world, but a bit messy. Now the second problem that we have is, imagine we add another sub into our class. So imagine we have a class like this, or we have the class like this, but imagine we add a print. So print result. And we're going to just change our class slightly to do this. We're going to have a private member, and the private member is going to be amount. And that's going to be a double. And what we're going to do is just when we do a calculate, instead of returning the value, what we're actually going to do is just store it in our class member, which is pretty standard as stuff that we do. And then when we print the result, what we're going to do is just do a debug print. So we're, we're basically letting our class do all the work. I'm just going to be a bit clever here. I'm going to do a type name. So it gives out the name of the current class. And then we'll do ampersand and we'll give out the amount. So the amount that we've calculated. So all pretty straightforward. So let's put this in our result here. And we're going to change this one to a sub so that they're both the same. And of course, we're going to have the same private variable. So let's do a debug compile. And you can see that it complains about calculate, but that's because we're not returning anymore. So we just get rid of result, and we can just have amount like this. So we can do the very same thing then for our interest B, and we get rid of result, and then we do a debug compile. And this one should be M amount. And now everything is working perfect. So let's close this one down and let's run this again. 
So this time we want to print it out using O interest. So let's do O interest A dot print, and this will print out our result. So it should have basically the same, basically the same result we get the other way, but we're going to look at the list advantages in a minute. So let's clear our immediate window and let's run this code. And you can see that the code print worked pretty much the same and printed out our object and the value. Now the problem happens is if we wanted to do some stuff here, so imagine we have some code here, and then later on we want to print out the result. The big problem is that we need to use another, another if statement like this, because we can only print from the correct item. So let's get rid of the ones up here. We can use Control Y to delete a line like that. One thing is that it clears the clipboard, so just be careful. And then further on, we're just going to print it out. So we have some code here, and then we're going to print it out like this. So again, we do a debug compile. Let's clear our immediate window, and let's run the code, and you see it worked. So the problem is that we have to have an if statement. Now in this case, it, it isn't that complicated, but imagine we're doing many different subs. We need an if statement or an if set of if statements like this. And imagine again, we have 10 or 20 objects. Our code is very messy indeed. So this is the second big problem. Now the final problem that we have is imagine we have another class and it's called account. And each account class has an object type of interest A or interest B and so on. And the reason it has it is because at runtime, we can set what type of interest behavior it's going to have. Now, the problem is, of course, again, that if we have O interest A as CLS, interest A, well, then we need to have one for every type. And then we need to have some kind of if statement somewhere where we say, if it's interest type, use this. If it's interest B, use this, and so on. And you can see that it makes the code very, very messy indeed. What we can do instead to solve all these problems is we can use interfaces. And by interfaces, we can use them using the implements keyword. So let's go ahead and change the code so that we use interfaces. So the first thing that we want to do is to create our interface class. And how we do that is as follows. We just create a class as normal. And we're going to call this class I interest, just so that we know it's the interest interface class. And once we have that class, what we do is we put in what we call our prototype subs or functions. So we place them in here, but we don't actually put any code in them. What they're actually saying is that any class that implements this interface must use these subs or functions or properties or whatever is in the class. So how this works is if we go to CLS interest and we say we want to implement the interface. II interest. Now when we do a debug compile, you can see that it says object model needs to implement calculate for interface I interest. So it's saying it needs to have the calculate function. So it's a very specific error. Now what that means is you can see we have it already, but we've got to put this before our subs, our functions, or whatever we implement. Now we don't use it outside, but we have to do it inside. Now if we do a debug compile, you see that it went to another error. So it went somewhere else. So it means that our class is okay. Now obviously we've got to update this code when we've changed to interfaces. Now, of course, we're going to do the very same thing with B. We're going to say implements, and it implements I interest. And again, if we do a debug compile, it will complain that the object model needs to implement calculate. So this again means we have to put interest underscore in front of it. And we do it like this. And then we do a debug compile, and you can see that it's got past that error. So it's given us an error somewhere else. So we've got we've implemented our interface. And as I said, what it's really saying is that these are the subs that you've got to implement. And why it says that is so that we can use them very easy in our code, as we were just about to see. So let's close down this intermediate window. And let's have a look here. So we've got our variables here. And instead of having all these declarations, all we need is one, we just need to declare one variable as I interest. 
and we'll have our if statement the same but it'll be setting this variable to any of the types so any of the types that implements i interest we can set this variable to and this gives us a lot of power now we're setting it to we don't need to have calculate in every if statement we can just have it down here so we get rid of the a get rid of the calculate here and it makes our if statement much cleaner now let's do a debug compile now you can see that it's complaining down further but the real beauty of this we're about to see is that every time we want to use o interest we don't need to use an if statement to check the type because vba already knows so we can just do o interest print result and vba will go to the correct type whether that's a or b so we can delete this and you can see already that our code is looking much neater so let's run this code to see what we get and let's clear our previous results we do a debug compile everything is okay let's run the code and you can see that we got the results as expected and you can see the code is much neater if we add any new object so say we have an object type c then we've only got to make changes in a few places you can see the code is much much nicer and it figures out itself which one of the objects to use so we don't have to use an if statement each time we just use it once so one thing we can do to make the code even neater is if we take this code and we put it in its own sub this is generally called a class factory because it's creating a class and we'll give it a we, we basically give it the type and it returns us the object so we give it by val interest type as string and let me close the immediate window and let me just bring this up on the screen so that we can see it and what we do is we declare our variable dim i interests as an interest type and then we set it down here let me just make that o interest just to keep it consistent and we set it down here and then at the end we say set class factory equals to o interests so this should be a function obviously and the function returns as interest so it returns an object of the interest type now this makes the code a lot neater so now all we need up here is set i interest and that should be o interest and we set that equal to the class factory and of course we pass it interest type do a debug compile as normal and then let's run this code just to make sure that everything worked fine and you can see that everything works fine and now the code that we have is much neater so now we're going to do something really interesting we're going to add a new type so in this case we're going to add the amount of 5000 and we're going to call it type c and what we want to do is add a thousand for this interest type so we're going to see how we can do this so the first thing we need to do is add our class module and we'll call our class module basically the same kind of idea but this time it's just going to be interest c and what we do then to create it is we simply go here copy this code because it's going to be mostly the same in this case and we paste it in here and then we can just say plus 1000 so now we've got our class in place we do a debug compile as always and then we go to the main code and all we've got to do is go to our class factory and in our class factory we simply add an entry for c so if the type equals c create the class c so let's do a debug compile and let's run the code and we'll delete these entries first of all and now we run the code and you can see that it did the interest for c so you can see the real beauty of using interfaces it means we can update the classes very very easy when we're using different types of behavior it makes it very simple rather than having if statements everywhere we let the classes take care of it now if you enjoyed this video please click on the like button if you're interested in building vba applications then you should check out my course the excel vba handbook course it teaches how to build vba applications from scratch by going step by step to 10 different applications and you can see more about this in the description now if you want a source code for this video you can also find it in the description the link is there and 
Just let me know in the comments if you thought this video was maybe a bit too complicated or you thought it was useful. Now, if you want to hear more about my videos, then click on the subscribe button to get notified. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you on the next one.